Hello, welcome back to part four of Let's Play Broken Sword, Shadow of the Templars. Right, it's been a few days since I managed to do one of these. Um, been really busy. Uh, I'm, I've just got home from work. I'm dirty, I'm tired, but I feel the need to play some Broken Sword. Um, now, last time we finished up just outside the Hotel Ubu, so we're going to jump straight back in and um, go inside. Right, okay, so we've not actually spoke to anybody yet or anything else. For anyone that may not have seen the last one, go back and watch it because it probably won't make any sense. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so we literally got here, saved it, and that was it. Right, let's try talking to these two chaps here. Excuse me. Yeah? Have you seen a guy dressed as a clown? No, I ain't. Don't tell me I missed him. Oh, that's too bad. I love the clowns, don't you? I've seen daytime television that was funnier. I love it when the little guys get hurt. That figures. Custard boys. Hose pipe down the pants, then smack! A plank in the kisser. You ever meet a guy called Plantow? No, I ain't. You missed your chance. If you're quick, you'll catch him at the coroner's. Do you happen to know a guy named Khan? That ain't nobody I know. I'm sorry to be a burden on your brain. Shake my hand. Nah. Oh, rats. Do you recognize the guy in this photograph? Is this a trick question? No, I simply asked if you recognized him. Okay then. No, I don't. Okay, that was no use, was it? See you later. Not if you see me first. <laughs> Dumb fuck. Right. Excuse me. Yes? Do you know a man by the name of Khan? No, I don't. It's very important I get to see him, and... I told you. I don't know it. I'm looking for a clown. Are you trying to be funny? No, I really am looking for a clown. There are no clowns here except you. Charming. Have you heard of a guy called Plantar? No. That name means nothing to me. Will you shake my hand? Are you joking? Who knows where it has been? Why would nobody shake my hand? Do you recognize the guy in this photograph? No. I never saw him. Fine. Forget it. Okay, now we're going to head inside in a minute. Um, but before we do, I'm just going to walk around a little bit and uh, get you guys to see the scenery. I don't think I've ever clicked on this before. Wow, that, that was an anticlimax. Just a shrug. Okay, right, fine. Now, I'm going to take this opportunity while there's no talking going on to just do some babbling of my own. The um, reason I didn't get a chance to... Uh, to do a video this weekend is because I decided to go clubbing. Now, I'm a 28, coming on 29 year old man. And um, for anybody a bit younger who goes clubbing, you know the old guys sat in the corner, kind of creepy looking, you know, just out of place. Well, I recently realized I'm those guys. I'm one of those guys. And um, for anybody else who's my age or older, and you've noticed that you don't see those people anymore. You are now those people. You are now the creepy people sitting in the corner, drinking with your creepy mate as the girls dance around you in tiny little clothes. And instead of looking at them and thinking, yeah, that's nice, you look at them and think, she must be cold. So that's when you know you're getting old. Anyway, my babbling's coming to an end for this particular bit. Um, we're going to go inside the hotel now. Before we do, uh, I just want to point out that Anybody who's watching this for the first time, haven't played the game, or even if you have, but you know, haven't really appreciated it, just listen to the music, listen to the sounds, and um, just take it all in. Also, we're going to meet one of the greatest characters in Broken Sword history. So, let's go in. See what I mean? Excuse me. 
Excuse me, didn't I see your picture in the news? You're that Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. Yes, that is me, in person. I don't want to worry you, but have you had any threats on your life? You know, mysterious phone calls, letters made up of headlines cut from the newspaper. I don't know what you're talking about. Right, okay. Um, I would like anybody that watches the video to leave a comment if you subscribe to, to YouTube at all. And just name all of the unpronounceable Eastern European states that you can think of. I just want to try and figure out where this guy's from. Have you seen a clown? I beg your pardon? The clown. A guy in funny pants. Have you seen him? My pants are from England. Marx and Spencer. Ha. They are a pleasure and a comfort to wear with much support. I'm real glad to hear that. You know, it's good to know you Nobel Prize winners are human too. In my country, the people make do with string and egg cartoons. For pants? For everything. Oppression is the mother of ingenuity. Do you know a guy called Plantow? I don't know anybody in Paris. Oh, well, this guy's dead anyhow. Why do you ask me about dead men? I have seen enough of death to last me a lifetime. I'm, uh, sure you have. May I shake you by the hand? I do not shake the hands of imperialist dogs. Now that's a real bad attitude problem you've got there. Yeah, that's a bit uncalled for. Do you recognize this man? He calls himself Khan. Yes, I know this man. Why do you carry his photograph? I'm a private detective. What's your interest in Khan? He is an enemy of my people. You know he's a killer? Of course, amongst other things. Would you help me investigate Khan? That is not possible. My instructions are to observe. I cannot jeopardize my position as an honored guest of this country's government. Okay. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. Now, it's a shame to stop this beautiful music, but I just have to speak to Lady Piermont. Hi there, ma'am. Well, hello. What can I do for you? I'm looking for a man. You disappoint me, my dear. For one foolish moment, I thought. But never mind. Aren't you going to tell me your name? Uh, George. George Stobart, ma'am. How sweet! I once had a stable boy called George. I am Lady Piermont. The common reaction is to kneel and stutter, but it's not obligatory. A real lady? I mean, you're an honest-to-God aristocrat? Oh, I don't know about that. Few of my ancestors are honest, not even to God. I can trace my family back to the Normans, but don't let that intimidate you, George. Beneath that impressive pedigree, I'm just flesh and blood. The blood may be blue, but the flesh is the plump beef of old England, so to speak. You appear distracted, George. Is there any way I can help you? Okay, now I have to speak a little bit about Lady Piermont. Um, I actually, I run a company, and one of my customers is a bona fide lady, Lady Thompson. And um, I genuinely thought for the first two years that she was a cleaner. Uh, she is nothing like this lady at all. Um, I always thought that it was a cleaner letting me in. And uh, I then asked, what is Lady Thompson like? Uh, and she said, well, it's me. So that was embarrassing. However, I have another customer who reminds me so much of this woman. And believe it or not, she lives in a council house, but she's got the voice. She's just, she looks kind of like her with the, with the, I don't know if she's got a mole or not, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna think she has anyway, just, just so it makes it even more like her. Um, but I, I love this character. She's one of my top three characters, Broken Sword, definitely. Anyway, enough of my babbling. Are you here in Paris on vacation? No, darling, I'm on holiday. <laughs> I needed to get away after Algie's funeral. I didn't realize you were mourning the loss of a loved one. I'm not, he was my husband. 
I'm sorry to hear about your husband's death. You wouldn't be if you knew him, my dear. It gave me the opportunity to take a well-deserved holiday. Daphne suggested a change of scenery. Paris, she said. The world romance is just what you need to take your mind off the inquest. Well, the closest I came to romance was being wooed by a drunken Breton ship. I must say I was disappointed with his cock van. Not at all what I was expecting. I was thinking of cutting my holiday short, packing my bags and heading back to Hemel Hempstead. That was until last night. Just um, some useless information here. Hemel Hempstead has a brilliant swimming pool. Anyway. What happened to you last night? I was stricken, Mr. Sturbot. Cupid's arrow has cleft my bosom. They couldn't really miss. It was just as I'd always imagined it should be. The intimacy of candlelight, romantic music tinkling across the room, and then a stranger's glance, those brooding eyes, that suave manner, those tight trousers. He was the man I'd been waiting for all my life. I'm glad he finally turned up after all these years. Ah, but it wasn't to be. He was merely toying with my affections. And if I ever catch up with him, he's dead. Who was the guy who led you on? His name is Merlin. Did you know there's a gangster out front? What makes you think he's a gangster? The Italian suit and the bulge in his pocket? I know plenty of men with Italian suits and bulges in their pockets. That doesn't necessarily make them gangsters. I'm looking for a murderer. Good heavens! You're a private detective. That's correct, ma'am. What's the term you Americans use? It's on the tip of my tongue. I believe what you're thinking of is dick. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> okay, sorry. Have you come across a man who calls himself Khan? I am familiar with only one person named Khan. Genghis Khan, the legendary Mongol barbarian chieftain? No, darling. Kevin. Kevin Khan? I never heard of him. I'd be most surprised if you had, darling. He's a pharmacist in Hemel Hempstead. Organizes fundraising for the Rotarian. Lovely man. Does he have a scar on his cheek? I really wouldn't know, sweetie. Would you like to shake my hand, ma'am? Now, George, there's no need to be so formal. We met as tourists, and I want to keep it that way, despite the enormous social gulf between us. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? My God, it's him! That's Merlin! She represented everything I loved about the English. The lady was totally deranged. Merlin? You mean King Arthur's wizard? Good heavens, no! Monsieur Merlin is a fellow guest. He's the man I've been telling you about. That's the man who spurned me. Okay, I would um, stand up for the for the Brits out there, um, but to be fair, the women are kind of crazy. The man you know as Merlin is a fake. What do you mean, sweetie? He's a murderer. He also uses the name Khan. I am shocked, Mr. Stobart. Shaken. I took him to be a gentleman, a man of honor. Do you know, I'd rather like to assist you in stitching him up. When did you last see Merlin? It was no more than an hour ago. He came downstairs and spoke to that clerk chappy. Something passed hands. I couldn't see what exactly. A briefcase? No, smaller than that. A bundle of papers, perhaps. The clerk put it in the hotel safe and Merlin went out. Are you sure you saw Merlin putting documents in the safe? Yes, darling. Positive. I wonder what they were. Obviously something of great importance. Yeah. I'd sure like to get my hands on whatever it is. I'll bet they had something to do with Plantow's briefcase. Has Merlin returned to the hotel? No, he hasn't. Are you going to search his room? If I could get in there, I would. Right. Okay, so now we've got somebody on our side who wants to stitch him up. I and, have uh, to go, ma'am. George, stop interrupting me. Anyway, right, so we've got somebody on our side, and we already know from the tailor that, um, Todrick, 
that uh, it's upstairs, second door on the right. So the second door on the right. The door was locked. Oh, of course it was. If it wasn't, this game would be far too easy. Okay, so we can see there's a key over here. So I don't know what room Hanging that's for. Hanging from a brass hook was a key and a plastic tag. Let's try and take it anyway. Excusez-moi, monsieur. What? You are trying to steal that key, no? No way. There was no one registered under the name of Khan. If the killer was staying here, he'd used a different pseudonym. Pseudonym, eh? I want some information. Who are you? The police? I'm conducting a private investigation. Ah, I know only too well what you mean. That is one of the drawbacks of the catering business. When people book into an hotel, they leave their morals at home, no? I'm looking for a man who dresses like a clown. This is a highly respectable hotel, monsieur. There are no clowns here. If you say so. Do you know a man named Plantow? No, monsieur. About the key hanging on the hook over there. Oui, monsieur. Which room is it for? Number 21. Is that room taken? No. The guests checked out this morning. I'd like to check into room 21. That is not possible. How come? You said it was vacant. It is reserved for another guest. Rats. No, monsieur. Dutch. Hey, shake my hand. I'd rather not, monsieur. I'm still sore from the shock administered by one of the guests. He was secretly concealing an electrical device in the palm of his hand. Practical jokes are so puerile, don't you think? Oh, yeah, sure. Right, yeah. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Yes, monsieur. That man is one of our guests. What name? <laughs> I cannot tell you that. Can you tell me which room the man in the photograph has taken? Oh, no, monsieur. That information is confidential. I'd like to retrieve something from your safe. Ah, oui, monsieur. May I see some form of identification? Uh, like what? A driving license, perhaps? I don't drive. Your passport? I don't have it with me. I could show you my operation, Scar. I'm sorry, monsieur. I must have some form of unique ID. You won't find a more unique ID than my Scar. I'm sorry. I must insist on a more traditional identification. Rats! Okay, so he's no help at all. Thanks for your help, buddy. Now, Lady Piermont said that she's happy to help, so let's go and speak to her again. Hi, ma'am. Hello, George. What can I do for you now? Would you distract the clerk while I borrow a key? Are you asking me to aid you in a criminal act, darling? Oh no! It's the key to an empty room. And why, may I ask, do you wish to gain access to an empty room? Do you plan to squat? No, ma'am. Scouts or not? I was never in the Boy Scouts, ma'am. Oh, you should have been. What were your parents thinking of? It's a fine way for a boy to get licked into shape. Now tell me. Why do you want to get into that room? I'm hoping it's the key to Merlin's room. Well, how can I refuse? I shouldn't think my feminine charms would be much use in this case, but a good dose of English arrogance might do the trick. Always works. Always. 
It's like a superpower. I see you there, Flunky. We, oui, madame. Listen carefully. You do understand English, don't you? But of course, madame. Good. I wish to deposit some jewellery for safekeeping. I understand. Are you quite certain? Oh, bien sûr, madame. Over to you, my dear. Yoink. Right, okay, so we've got a key. It's to an empty room, but we've got a key. Now, I've got to apologise for any noise that you may hear on the mic. I'm wearing a, uh, a headset with a mic and I'm drinking beer. So every now and again I've noticed I've sort of tapped the microphone or you might hear me drinking. Um, also, you might hear my dogs crying because they're being little dicks. Shut up! Okay, right. So room 21 we've got the key for. The sign on the door read 21. That's handy. Uh, get our key and open the door. Uh, maybe it wasn't the right room, but this was the right key. Okay. Now, there's no point trying to look at anything. I'm going to see if this lamp works, because I don't really know. Is it the lamp? No, sorry, the wardrobe. There was nothing in the wardrobe apart from a vague, lingering smell of camphor. Hmm, curious. But anyway, as we already know, this is the wrong room. So... Let's try and get next door. Here we go. Now, whenever you hear that music, you know you're doing something right. Or something dangerous. In this case, both. I love this scene. For some reason, I don't know why, it's, it's one of the best looking bits of art in the game, as far as I'm concerned. If I wanted my shin sticking out of my shoulders, I could have jumped. Mama Stobart didn't raise no suicidal fools, though. Okay, so we're in the room next door, and I see a briefcase. So this must be Khan or Merlin or whatever the hell his name is. It must be his room. I searched the interior of the briefcase, but as I'd half expected, it was empty. Okay. There was nothing in the pockets of the pants. Damn. The assassin had been too smart to leave incriminating evidence beside his bed. Right, okay. This is clearly not getting us anywhere. The bed was freshly made, and the crisp white sheets told me nothing about the killer's habits. Now, just to let you know, in the uh, director's cut, this is one of the areas that you get some additional content. So, um, definitely play that as well. Play it in its original form, as I've said before, but definitely play the director's cut as well. Just going to leave now. Uh oh. Scarface. I had the kind of feeling in my stomach that would usually send me running to the bathroom. Nice. Now 
Now, my personal feelings should have been that you should have a certain amount of time to click that wardrobe, otherwise you get shot or something. But that's just that's just me. You won't hear me criticise this game very often. Okay, so now we've got some trousers. Or pants for the Americans. Pants. I couldn't believe my luck when I found two items in the pocket of the pants. The first was an ordinary matchbook. No matches, no clues. The second was a pass card which read Thomas Merlin. Gruber Electronics Corporation. Gruber. That's fun to say. Right, so, we just got a matchbook. The matchbook bore a pattern of swirling color and the words Club Alamut. And a Gruber um, ID. It was the card I'd found in the hotel bedroom. It read Thomas Merlin, Gruber Electronics Corporation. Okay, so. There's nothing else to click on in here, by the way. I've already scanned over the room. Now, it's quite strange. I mean, if you look at this door here, it looks like it's got a standard chub key type lock. So why I was able to open it from the inside, but not the outside, is beyond me. Anyway, I should stop picking holes and stuff. George looks a bit Chinese here, for some reason. There we go. There was no one, but the name in the book for room 22 was Merlin. Right, so let's try uh, getting something out the safe again. Did he just spit on his nails? Gross. What now, monsieur? Hey there, monkey face. Um, Does this pass mean anything to you? That is Monsieur Merlin's property. That's right. Merlin the murderer. I want to see what he's left in your safe. Impossible. I cannot betray his confidence, no matter what you say he's done. You're making a big mistake. Maybe. I can live with that. Right, okay, so this guy's still not being helpful. Thanks for your help, buddy. But if there's one thing you can always rely on, it's the helpfulness of a strange English lady. Actually, pro tip, uh, most English people won't help you at all. But there are some nice ones out there, like Lady Piermont here. Hi, ma'am. Hello, George. What can I do for you now? I got the key. Thanks for your help, ma'am. Right. So, let's see if she knows anything about this matchbook. I found this matchbook in Merlin's bedroom. It came from the Club Alamut. It might be useful to find out if that club is in Paris, George. Good thinking. I found this pass in Merlin's room. So, that deceitful little man is passing himself off as an electrician, is he? Uh-huh. This guy probably has a million faces. I showed the pass to the clerk, hoping he'd give me Merlin's papers. But he wouldn't buy it. He's too scared. I'll give him something to be scared of. Follow me, George! <laughs> I just love her voice. Did you place a package from Merlin in the hotel safe? I did, madame. And did my friend here show you Merlin's identification? Indeed he did, but... What's the problem? He isn't Merlin. A mere academic detail. Give him the package. But 
That is against the law. I happen to be a justice of the peace, you silly man. I am the law. If he tries anything, shoot him, George. My pleasure, Lady Piermont. One moment, please. Now that guy can mince. You know, I haven't enjoyed myself this much since Greenham Common. I don't know what I would have done without you, Lady Piermont. Voila, monsieur. Le manuscrit de Monsieur Merlin. Thanks. How satisfying. An Anglo-American alliance that actually worked. The clerk had given me a tightly rolled sheet of parchment. I decided not to unroll it until I was safely back in Nico's apartment. Ah, spoil spot. Right, so we've got the... We've got the uh, thing that we came to get. Sorry about that, the volume on my headphones just went up really quickly for some reason. Anyway, so we've got the, uh, the parchment, as he called it. It was the ancient manuscript which Khan had stolen from Plantau. Now, I don't trust the, the goons that I saw outside. So, and having played this game so many times, I know what happens if you go out. Now, I'm going to try and get rid of this, uh, this manuscript so that they can't take it off me. The door was locked. You've got a key, you silly man. Right. So, let's fry it out the window. Or not. I love the way he just shrugs. Now why this is the case, why you have to step out on the ledge just to throw I something out the window. No way to the but I couldn't let it fall into the hands of the goons waiting outside. Okay, seems to still be in one piece. I figured it was best for me to return to the street before attempting to pick up the manuscript. That sounds like sound advice, but okay. Now, of course, by the way, the reason you had to climb out on the ledge to be able to throw that down there is so you could see that beautiful animation of it falling down from the floor. So I'm not criticising it at all. I just find it strange. <laughs> I love the old telly. Oh, the 90s were fun. Just a minute, monsieur. What's your problem? No problem, if you cooperate. What do you want? Just a routine security check. Nothing to worry yourself about. Oh, well, all right. Search him, Platt. You bet! Easy, Tiger. Hey, knock it off. Get off, you big ape. Nothing, Guido. Zilch! Our apologies, monsieur. What? I had to report you to the authorities. Randir, we are the authorities. You want I should break his arms? No. Let him go, Flat. See? I bet you're glad I threw that um, manuscript out the window now. Let's go and get it. Here it is. If the manuscript was what Flap and Greedo were after, they were going to be disappointed. I couldn't wait to get back to Nico's apartment and check it out. You're just not going to believe what I've found. It's not another part of the clan's costume, is it? 
You cheeky bitch. It's a medieval manuscript. Khan left it in the safe at the Ubu. It's incredible. Is this what he took from Plantark? It could be, which means it's worth enough to kill for. And I took it to our apartment. Look there, two guys on the same horse. Oh, yeah. Maybe they couldn't afford one each. What of it? Have you ever heard of the Knights Templar? Their official seal was an image of two knights sharing a horse. Whatever this manuscript means, it's connected with the Templars. How come you know about these knights? I learned about them while writing an article on the Crusades. This guy, named Hughes de Payen, arrived one day at the court of King of Jerusalem. He offered to protect the Christian pilgrims from the displaced Muslim army. The king would be able to guarantee safe transit to Christians in the Holy Land. Safer journeys meant more pilgrims, and pilgrims meant trade and wealth. The Templars proved invaluable to the king as a mercenary army. It was said that they never asked how many the enemy numbered, just where they were. And as the years went by, the Templars grew in wealth and number. They were so rich, even kings came to them for loans. But at the height of their power, they fell foul of the King of France. He rounded them up and turned them over to the Inquisition. Thousands of Templars were subject to torture and confessed to heresy. Of course, at the end of the Inquisition, there wasn't much they wouldn't confess to. The last Grand Master Jacques de Molay was burned alive. But the treasure of the Knights Templar was never found. Jeez, so the treasure is hidden, waiting to be discovered? If there ever was a treasure, it's been lost for 600 years. Anyway, we're supposed to be investigating a serial killer, not a medieval treasure trove. But maybe that's what the clown and his accomplices are after. Maybe this manuscript is the key. You'd better leave it here for safekeeping. Think about it, George. One guy's already died for it, as you said yourself. Besides, that parchment is fragile. Okay, okay, I'm convinced. You keep hold of it. Right, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to have a quick conversation with Nico and then end this video. I apologise if it's a bit longer than the other ones. Um, I just get way into this game. Way into this game? Way too, too... I don't know, I just get really into the game, okay? I found Plantow's briefcase in the killer's hotel room. It was empty, of course. What are you doing to help trace the killer clown? Research, George. Yeah? You have a copy of the clown's yearbook? I have a telephone and lots of contacts. Oh. Well, did you find anything useful? Not yet. I'm employing my first and most useful weapon. What's that? Patience. Oh, I've heard of that. Isn't it a substitute for decisive thinking? He's got away with the ladies. Have you found out any more about the murders? Well, it may be nothing, but both the clan's victims visited Paris earlier this year. When? The second week of July. They were both here at the same time. Did they meet? I don't know, but I can't imagine it was coincidence. Hey, Nico, shake hands with me. No chance, Buster. Sam. I found this matchbook in the killer's hotel room. It's from the Club Alamut. Never heard of it. Is there anything written inside it? No. What were you expecting? If this was a movie, there'd be a clue. A name or an address. That's no use. There aren't even any matches in it. Oh, well. I'll keep it as a souvenir. Looks like there's one match in it, but um, I'm just saying. Do you want this photograph? No, you keep it. I can always make another print. I found this in the killer's room. What is it? A credit card? ID, Thomas Merlin, of the Gruber Electronics Corporation. Gruber. Never heard of him or the company. Okay, so I'm going to uh, end the conversation. I'd better get back to searching for that clown. Okay, I'm going to research the Knights Templar.
Now, I'm aware there was another option to, um, to talk about the manuscript again. Uh, but as we need to end this video, I thought I'd come outside, save it, and um, we'll pick up where we left off next time. Okay, thanks for watching.